pray for one another. That's all we can do. Be faithful. Today I'm going to give you a test. Okay? I'm not a school teacher. I got a call this week to either be a substitute on Tuesday in the high school or work a funeral. I took the funeral. <laughs> At least one person there doesn't talk back. <laughs> I know that's true. Okay, I'm going to give you a test. I'll give you the two. Every, every question has two options. And you have to raise your hand on which one you think is right. Number one. A. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. B. Jeremiah was a prophet. Okay, raise your hand if you think Jeremiah was a bullfrog. I figured out on the bridge. I did. <laughs> B. I put it for C. No, I'm sorry. It's a simple test. It's A or B. Jeremiah was a prophet. All right, now listen. A little trick here. Jeremiah, A, was married with children. B, Jeremiah was single without children. I mean, you believe A, Jeremiah was married with children. I mean, you, so y'all are just chicken. That, that A, you're just not, you know, I mean, you think it's B, he was single without children. I mean, you didn't vote. Can we do Google? Jeremiah was single. Number three, Jeremiah also wrote, wrote the book of Lamentations. That's A. B, Jeremiah only wrote one book entitled Jeremiah. I mean, you believe A, he also wrote Lamentations. I mean, you believe he wrote just one book. And some of you are not playing my game, all right? <laughs> he did write Lamentations. Number four. A. Jeremiah was known as a joyful prophet. B. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. I mean, you, you believe it was A. He was the joyful prophet. I mean, you think B. He was the weeping prophet. And he was. And I'm not trying to say any of you are biblically ignorant. But Jeremiah is not one of those books that we turn to. Even though it has awesome, awesome truths. It's a historical book. A couple of weeks ago, I posted on my Facebook page, it's a free video you could watch uh, about Jeremiah. And I said, watch this if you can. All you have to do is download it or ask for it to be, it's not a trick, it's free. They're, they are trying to get you to buy some other movies later, but you don't have to enter any information just to watch it. And I can't remember the actor's name. He was on one of those doctor shows a while back. But uh, he plays the part of Jeremiah. And it's a, it's a very um, emotional story. A lot of uh, violence. You say, why would I want to watch it? It's a historical fact of what happened to this man. So today... This introduction, church, is not going to be a hellfire and brimstone sermon. It's not going to be a Billy Graham, just as I am, invitation. I've got to get you started because I want to get you to have an appetite to read this book. As you read it, you're going to get bogged down and go, I have no idea what's going on. Here's what you do. Just keep going. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Now that was three miles from Jerusalem. Anathoth was the town where the priests lived. Now the reason we have son of Hilkiah here, because in the Bible there are seven men named Jeremiah. So this also confirms that he was the son of a priest. He was of priestly heritage. Because there was another Hilkiah also. You say, why did they do that? The same reason we have so many Joneses and Browns and Smiths and Allens and Gordons. Just, that's just what happens with names. And look at verse 2. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah. Now this is very, very important. Josiah, the son of Ammon, 
king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. Josiah became king of Judah when he was eight years old. <laughs> Why? Because his daddy got killed. And he became king. We don't know anything about his mother except her name was Jedidah. But she must have had a godly influence on this young boy. In fact, this would have been a great Mother's Day sermon. Because this young boy, Josiah, who was crowned king at eight, and of course did not have the wisdom to be the king at the age of eight, but no doubt he was taught well by his mother and groomed him until he was a teenager. And we find, and let me just give you a little history on Josiah, because you need to understand Josiah to understand Jeremiah. Josiah, at the age of 16, the Bible says he sought the Lord. You parents and grandparents of children, teenagers, it is not too early for them to seek the Lord. In fact, if we lined up all the adults in this room who did not seek the Lord at age 16, they would all, I, would, I feel sure, most of you and most of us would say, we have some regrets about our teenage days. But you do not have to sow the wild oats and go out and live like the devil so you can have a great testimony. This young man, Josiah, from age 8 to age 16, was no doubt homeschooled and was taught to seek the Lord. And here's what's interesting about this. He had an ungodly father. And he had an ungodly grandfather, Manasseh. They both did evil. They both led people into idol worship. But at 16, King Josiah sought the Lord. At age 20, Josiah purged Judah and Jerusalem of idols. Age 20? I got married at age 20. I thought I was pretty mature. But imagine a 20-year-old leading a nation to fight against Wickedness and idolatry. Oh God, would we love to have one of those directing our paths. Unlike his daddy Ammon and his grandpa Manasseh. At age 26, he led them to rebuild the temple. And then at age 39, he died. He went to battle with the king of Babylon. And most historians believe this was a very unwise decision. I bet he didn't ask his mama. And he went into battle to fight king, the king of Babylon, and he was killed, age 39. Now, I tell you all this because Jeremiah is, a, is, is right along here in age with, with Josiah. When Josiah was 21, Jeremiah was probably about 16. We don't have exact dates, but we know about what happened in history. Jeremiah was in his 30s when Josiah died. The northern kingdom had, had fallen in 722 B.C. But Jeremiah was called at 627 B.C. Here's the great thing about the Bible. It's historical. It's true. Cindy and I spent some time this week with a college student. I cannot even say on Facebook Live, what this young man is facing in the classroom. In a private meeting sometime, I will tell you. You better have your faith settled before you leave the nest. Because he is being taught godless philosophies. I may even mention last Sunday about a class that was an option for him to take. That basically the, the whole premise of the class was there is no God. 
When I went to college in the 70s, I chose a Christian college. But even then, the secular uh, colleges were going to a very humanistic philosophy. And we have college graduates right in this room who could tell us some of the same stuff. It was try they tried shoving down their throat. But I want to remind you that right now, you that are, we have a teenager here. We have a young, young adults here. We have many teenagers who come and go. I just wish we could get them all here at the same time. But you can serve God in your youth. You don't have to be stupid to be a servant of God. You don't have to have done all kinds of crazy things. And, but at the same time, praise God, Layla just sang a song, I am guilty. My hands are dirty. But you plead my cause. You right my wrongs. You take my chains. Wow. What a song. How can it be? Because all of us have sins that we're so thankful that are forgiven. And the scripture tells us not only are they forgiven, they're forgotten. Romans 8, 1 says, there is, no, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and I've preached a whole series on this, you are not going to have a movie of your whole life and everybody see every dirty thing you ever did for the whole universe to witness. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says there's no condemnation when you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our sins are forgiven. And by the way, since they're forgiven, we should forgive one another. We should not bring them back up. Parents, when you're disciplining your children, don't keep things in your back pocket just so you can remind them of what they used to do or what I forgave you for. Or do you remember when? Don't do that. It's forgiven. Look at verse 3. It also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. After Josiah died, his son became the king, unfortunately. And what does the scripture say? He was an evil king like his grandfather, Manasseh. Until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah. So, Jehoiakim didn't last long. And then Zedekiah became the king. The last king of Judah before it fell to the hands of the Babylonians. They were evil kings. And says... In uh, verse 3, the king of Judah until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Remember, we've, we studied Nehemiah in the past. All this happened before this captivity. And this good king Josiah and this good prophet Jeremiah were serving together. And Jeremiah was preaching the word. He was telling people to repent. If you watch that movie, it's, it's a little painful at times. And there's no, it's not gory, okay? But it does show the violence that happened and to these people. And I challenge you, go to my Facebook page and see that link. Or just go to Christian Movies and, you, and just put the word Jeremiah. But let me tell you this. Jeremiah lived... And he served for 40 years under good, a good king and under evil rulers. He remained faithful to his calling and his message, no matter who was in charge. You see, what we're going through as a nation is no excuse for us to go, Hey, going to the dogs anyway, why bother? No, we should stand firm. We should stand for our faith. We should stand for our families. We should stand for our freedoms. And God let Jeremiah serve under godless kings after Josiah died. Look at verse 4, please. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, 
And by the way, Jeremiah is one of those few prophets that gives us a lot of insight into his own life. And he had a, what they call an amanuensis, or a scribe, a secretary, named Baruch, B-A-R-U-C-H. And uh, it's one of the best stories in Jeremiah that I love, but it's in the chapter, in the 30 chapters. So I don't know when we'll get there. But it says, the word of the Lord came to me. God had to speak to these men at this time because there were no prophecies written. This was being written. God talked to Jeremiah. Now, God does not speak to us in the same way today. He doesn't need to because we have his word. Watch out for people who said God told them something. Now, in my heart, I have definitely believed God directed me to do many things, to make decisions, to make moves, to marry the right girl, on and on and on. But I never heard God say, hey, Rick, it's time to move to Skippers. But if you read this word and you stay faithful to the Lord, he will direct your spirit, your soul. And kids, God will direct your mom and dad and give them wisdom that you don't have. And you say, well, I'm as smart as they are. I know as much as they do. They don't understand. Listen, my daddy, before he was even a Christian, had wisdom. My daddy always believed in God, but he really didn't get truly born again until he was in his 40s. And I was a teenager. God gives our parents wisdom. And when your mom and dad, or when your grandma and grandpa, when they, when they say to you, I don't think you should do that. I don't think you should go there. You better listen. You say, could they be wrong? Possibly. But you're safer listening to them. If your grandpa says to you, I think you better wait on that decision. Listen to that wisdom. But here, Jeremiah, God was talking to him. Look, verse 5. Here's what God said to Jeremiah. Here is a teenager, and God is talking to him, and God said, I wish I had one of those God voices. Before I turn, form you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Whoa. Way to interrupt my teenage years. But Jeremiah's mama knew it. You said, do you believe in predestination? Well, it's right here. God predestined this young man, just like he predestined John the Baptist, just like he predestined Moses. And I'm surely not putting myself in the same category, but I believe God predestined and called me. But I had the option of saying, no, Lord, not interested. I think I'll do something different. And these, these guys did too. Jeremiah did not have to do, because you're going to see as we study this man's life, there's not one mention in this book about his joy. He never said, hallelujah, we're going to church. We're going to worship God today. He didn't get on his Facebook and say, welcome to Forest Hill today. Can't wait till you get here. His life was difficult. He said, oh, this is going to be a depressing study. No. It's going to be a hopeful study to, for all of us to realize God has a purpose for us. God has a calling for us. And God enables us. God said to him, before you were ever born, I sanctified you. He was born to be a servant. He was consecrated before his birth. And here's teenage Jeremiah. We expect maybe 16 years old. Just started shaving. I mean, you know, just got his first Mustang, right? God saved him. I've ordained you to be a prophet. And you're going to tell, you're going to give judgment to this nation. Look at verse 6. What did Jeremiah say? 
Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. Lord, I'm a teenager. I just got my license. I haven't even had my first kiss yet. And I've got to be a prophet? He said, God, I can't speak. This is not for me. What if God woke you up in the night tonight and said, I'll pick on Dale, because Dale loves to talk in public. Dale, you will preach at Forest Hill next Sunday. And Cody will lead the music. And Kayla will stay home. But this is what happened to this young man. He said, Lord, no way. I can't do this. Look at verse 7. This is a great story. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. And I love this, verse 8. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And verse 9, Jeremiah writes, Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Layla, I have no doubt that there has been a time before you got up here to sing that something inside of you says, You can't do this. What are you, what's wrong with you? I don't want to hear you sing. You messed up one of your words last time. Rick started in the wrong key. This is going to be a mess. You see, anytime we try to go forward, there's always those fears. Remember when you had your first kid? Now, we adopted our first one, so my wife didn't go through nine months. We had one month to get ready, and we picked up a baby at the hospital. We had one month. People were throwing stuff at us left and right. Everything we had was borrowed. They didn't have time for new. They did have a baby shower after we got her home. But I remember the first day looking at her going, what do we do? What if she breaks? On the way home from the hospital in Lima, yeah, Lynchburg, our pastor was driving the car, and he's still alive, lives in Roanoke. He's the pastor emeritus at the church where Tim and Mark have served. Pastor Alderman, he drove us to Lynchburg to pick up our baby. We were in the back seat. I wore my best gray suit, and she threw up all over my, my good gray suit. That was the most precious little spit up. I loved it. But I remember looking at Now, Cindy, I don't think she ever feared. She, she just models now. But dads, if you didn't go through some kind of godly fear, what am I doing with this child? Oh, my goodness. And then your wife comes and tells you, we're going to have another. And it's, tw it's twins, you know. And then when your kids start having kids, and you look at them and go, I know they don't know what to do. <laughs> but God put his hand on his mouth and he said, I'm going to put those words in your mouth. Wow. God.